Today we're going to talk about your sacrum and what you can do when it breaks. Your sacrum is a wedge-shaped bone that's located at the very bottom of your lumbar spine. And this bone, as well as your sacroiliac joints, allow your body to disperse weight from the top half of your body all the way down to your hips and toes. If you've seen any of my other videos, you've learned that there are two types of bone in your body, spongy bone and cortical bone. The bones of your hips and pelvis tend to be more spongy in nature. We see that when athletes develop bone stress injuries and these type of spongy bones, they're at a much higher chance of having disordered eating or amenorrhea. Our relationship with food and our hormone function play a huge role in the development of bone stress injuries. We also see that when athletes sustain bone stress injuries in these more spongy bones, they're at a much higher chance of having low bone mineral density, and a less dense bone is more likely to fracture. All the bones in your body work together to coordinate movement. You see, your sacrum is directly connected to your pelvis. These two bones work together. They act like a functional unit. Let's imagine going back to being a kid and jumping on a trampoline. Now that trampoline is a good representation of our pelvic floor and our pelvic bones. And if one of those coils breaks on a trampoline, we're gonna have to deal with more stress on those other coils. The same thing happens at our pelvis which is probably why 78% of sacral stress fractures will also have a pubic rami stress fracture. Now these injuries are rare in the general public, but they are common in endurance athletes. There's three different zones for where sacral fractures develop. The most common place for a sacral stress fracture is zone one, as shown here. When a runner is dealing with a sacral stress fracture, they'll normally report a gradual onset of unilateral pain in their lower back, their pelvis, or their hip. This pain normally worsens over time to the point where any kind of impact activities are painful. They also may report pain with going up steps, walking for prolonged periods of time, wearing a backpack, or any activities that involve going into hip flexion. Now there's other things that can cause unilateral back pain, so these conditions should be in your differential diagnosis. And when you seek out a healthcare provider, they'll probably take you through a bunch of different tests. Normally, sacral stress fractures will report pain with unilateral hopping, potentially with squatting on one leg. They'll often report tenderness with palpation to their sacrum and a positive squish test. Now, the only true way that we can diagnose a sacral stress fracture is through imaging. X-rays or radiographs don't do a good job of detecting these, with MRIs being our best chance of picking one of these up. Once we've established that we're working with the correct diagnosis, there's a few key things that we want to focus on in treatment. Because of this bone's more spongy nature, we often need to refer to a dietitian or an endocrinologist. Additional testing can look into things like our hormone function and our relationship with food, which are two of the most important things you want to get right when rehabbing one of these injuries. We also might want to look at a DEXA scan, a test that looks at how dense our bones are. Once those referrals have happened, there's a good chance you're going to need to be non-weight bearing for a little bit. This could mean being on crutches for four to six weeks, and definitely making sure that if you're going to stay weight bearing that you don't have any pain with weight bearing activities. As with most stress fractures, we want to make sure that you're at zero out of 10 pain at all times. It's typical to be able to start some cross training at about six weeks after diagnosis, as well as a progressive exercise program that we'll get to in a later video. Understanding the biomechanics and the potential factors that go into these injuries are really important. I hope this video has given you some good insight into the background behind these injuries. 